red bird because they saw a red bird or um, red cloud. And, and we also learned that the men in the Native American tribes had long hair. You can see in this picture, um, they have very smooth skin because they don't grow much facial hair in that particular race of people. So some of the pictures that we saw yesterday, we could almost confuse them for older women because they just have no beards whatsoever. Very handsome and brave people. Um, from the time that they're very little, the Native American boys would play a lot of physical games where it would involve getting hurt so that when they got older and they were in battle, they were um, they were very brave. They just were strong and brave. And in this picture, you can see they're fighting against some soldiers. And who do you suppose the soldiers are fighting for? Uh, there could be an independence of America or the independence. Yes. Yeah, the United States of America. And as you can see, it was back in the day before there were no cars. And in this picture, it shows the, the Native Americans um, using rifles. But we have to remember that um, probably some of them were using bows and arrows still. Um, yeah. The soldiers were all equipped with rifles, but um, Native Americans did not have factories that made rifles. So the soldiers of the US Army were better equipped with um, weapons. So I think we'll go on to the next picture. Yeah. And I'm glad there's so many people here today to read. And um, in this picture, you can see it's a very old picture, but there's a gathering of Native Americans. Um, if you happen to see any eagle feathers in their head, um, Docs, can you tell me what an eagle feather how come they would wear a feather in their hair? Ma'am, uh, ego feathers are the like the feather that they wear of the eagle a feather they wear on their hats and but now it is banned because uh, because of uh, the eagles are endangered in US and it should not be extended as it is the national bird of US. It's so the it national bird of now. US. And Manaf, what else do you know about if they earn an eagle feather, why did they earn an eagle feather? And I'm like, uh, they will wear the eagle that uh, has and that. Then it shows that uh, they are chief or something, I think. Yesterday you discussed it. Some... You discussed what yesterday. Do you think, sir? Yes. It is just like an award for any achievement, for any bravery, uh, for any kind of special talent they have proved in their life. Just like today we have the souvenir, we have some shields, we have some trophies. So in the same way, in those days, I think those uh, feather were given as a sign of, or as a token of appreciation and uh, as a vela or any kind of achievement in their life. Very good. I'm going to read the first, um, well, I'm going to read in the overview, a oh, question or comment. Okay, I'm just going to read the overview, the first bullet point, because you're going to hear some Native American tribes. Mm -hmm. And yesterday we learned that <clears throat> different regions of America had different tribes. <clears throat> so the Battle of the Little Bighorn was fought between the forces of Lakota, Northern Cheyenne, and Arapaho tribes against the 7th Cavalry, led by George Armstrong Custer. And Sajid, can you read the next bullet point? The Jad. Yeah, the, the, battle, the battle took place on June 24, 25, 1876 in Eastern Montana Territory. And how about Manaf, the next bullet point, please? It was one of the most uh, important battles of the Great uh, Soldiers Wars of 1876. And we're going to learn that S-I-O-U-X is pronounced Sioux, just like my name, Madam Sioux. We're going to call them the Sioux Indians or the Sioux Native Americans. Yesterday, we learned that 
Yes. The reason that people in the United States call this group of people Indians is because long ago, an explorer called Christopher Columbus came to America and he was lost and he thought he was in the East Indies. So the natives that came to him, he called them Indians. Um, nowadays, um, sometimes we call them Indians. Most of the time we call them Native Americans because they're the indigenous people of our of our country. And let's go to... Uh, Shivansh, can you read the last bullet point, please? Yes, ma'am. The Indian tribals had the overwhelming, overwhelming factories. Overwhelming victory in the battle. Yeah, and overwhelming is another one of those compound words <clears throat> like we have in um in English. And if you're whelmed or overwhelmed, it means that it's just so complete. It's a complete victory in battle. So let's look at the next slide. And there's Montana. It's in the middle of the United States. Uh, recently, my husband and I drove through there. We saw many grasslands <clears throat> and there's some mountains there. And in the corner of Montana by Wyoming, there's a place called the Black Hills. And that's a place where there is quite beautiful. It was sacred lands to the Indians or Native Americans because um, they really had a religion that was a natural religion. They believed certain places were very special and they were closer to God in those places. And I will have to say it's quite a beautiful place. So, But on top of being a beautiful place, gold was discovered. And that's where the problem came in. So how about... Um, Let's see. Docs, can you read the very bottom of that, please? Yeah, ma'am. The Sioux, pronounced Sioux, are a cluster of tribes who live in the middle of USA. Of the USA. There you go. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so now you can see, um, yesterday we learned about the eagle feathers. If someone is a chief, they're going to have a lot of eagle feathers. So let's go ahead and can, uh, uh, sir, I can't, I'm not, sa, 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 how do you say sajad? Sajad, sajad. Sajad, okay, yeah. thank you. Sajad, <laughs> can you read that? Thank you. Chief Red Cloud was one of the best, most capable leaders of the Ogala, Ogalala uh, Sioux tribe. Originally, the Oglala remained at peace with the white settlers as they traveled through their territory. But in 1865, gold was discovered in Montana. Chief Red Cloud, along with other Indians, vowed to fight uh, against the U.S. Army. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, um, Daksh, can you read that, please? Yeah, yeah. is joining. Right, living up. Tribes okay. living across North America did not believe that land was something to be owned. They were troubled by the increasing number of white settlers coming into the, their land. The early settlers saw the vast American West and set out to build farms, houses, and cities. They accomplished what they set out to do despite uh, attacks from more warlike Native American tribes. Tribes attacked wagon trains and killed men, women, and children. Eventually, peace treaties were signed, but unfortunately, these tre treaties were broken by USA citizens and even the USA government. Yeah, so the citizens, the people that wanted to move west, saw this as a vast empty place that they could own a little piece of land and farm and build a city. The Native Americans saw it as their homeland where the buffalo grazed. So it's two complete different mindsets. So let's go to the next slide. Okay, um, Manav, can you read that, please? Uh, yes, ma'am. Here are things tell. There are there are things they tell us and uh, and uh, uh, us that uh, that sounds good good to hear, but but the but 
but when that have a cause accomplished. accomplished accomplished their purpose 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 purpose, purpose. Yeah. purpose. Purpose, they they will go home and will not try a full full fulfill or uh, agreements with them. So there was sitting bull opposing sitting bull opposing uh, Sue yeah. Bill of eighteen eighty nine. So it is that uh, thank that you. is a uh, sit bull. No, yesterday we saw yes sit bull. Yeah, we learned that sitting yes, bull was one of the most famous chiefs of the Native American tribes. We commented a lot on his face and what a tough, strong man he was. He was very intelligent and a very good leader of his tribe. Um, so he, one of the things we used to hear in the movies when I grew up, there was a lot of movies about cowboys and uh, Native Americans. And the Native Americans would always say, white men speak with forked tongue, meaning that they'd say one thing, mean another. So. This is what Sitting Bull stood up at for his people and said, they tell us things that are good to hear, but they're not going to keep their agreement. So, he, yeah. So let's find out. There's a lot of conflict here in this story of the Little Bighorn War. Let's go to the next slide. Okay. So our top, we're going to call that top word Sioux. Sioux Wars. Okay. Sioux Wars. There oh, were Sioux. Only so. Sioux so wars. Sioux so, so wars. There okay. were continued fights between settlers moving westward and the local Indian tribes. The fights scaled into Escalated. the start. into the start of the. Like my name, Sioux. Sioux wars. Very good. United States government began sending soldiers westward to clear the Indians from the west. Custer 17, cavalry, cavalry, cavalry was one of the many detachments that was sent to take part in the Sioux Wars. Thank you. You know, as you look at this, who can remember from yesterday what that big headdress represented? Do you remember that, Dr. Shermanoff? Well, I'll, I'll jump in. Each one of those eagle feathers was a brave deed. It was an award. So if you were a chief and you had that many eagle feathers, it just was the equivalent of having five doctoral five degrees. degrees. Five PhDs. Yeah. Yes. Five PhDs. Five, five he, doctor's degree, yes. Yeah. So he's, he's a very, very brave chief. Yes. Um, you'll notice the headdress, you'll notice the different beadwork. Their clothing was made from the hides of buffalo. Um, they used every part of the buffalo, if, and they really revered the animals, even though that was their main food. Um, they were very brave people. And uh, let's go on to the next. Oh, I was going to say what the word cavalry is. You're going to hear that over and over. And that is the American forces. That's the USA forces. And they were cavalry because they rode horses. So let's go to the next slide. Okay, let's see. Um, Shivanj, can you read this next paragraph, please? Yes, ma'am. The seven to live was made up of many experienced winter soldiers and was first created right after the American Civil, Civil War. The Civil War 1861 to 1865 was fought to end slaves. Yes, okay. And a civil war is when the nation fights against itself. Yeah. Yes, and it's Manav's turn. It was com composed of 45 officials and 718 uh, drop fees, many of whom had just uh, recruited recruit for, uh, for man and one year. Return, return from, return from, and eight, eight, eighteen, eighteen months uh, development. Deployment. 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 
deployment deployment in the deep south to ash 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 yes 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 they need to help it is with the southern southern states in the rubbing rubber rubbing 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 uh, after the after the civil civil war ma'am in this yes ma'am in this photo is there ma'am ma'am i see it's look one ghost ma'am like uh, you will see in your right side that one boy is there ma'am see ma'am in in his hand in, in his hand one book is there ma'am see his yes. face you have to know that during the before the civil war was fought the blacks in the south were mostly slaves they never they they the owners of the slaves did not want them to be educated because if they were educated they might rebel um so after the civil war then teachers would come and teach the people how to read so that they could become educated and and be free because part of our education the more education we have the freer we are we can make more doors more doors open to us just like you are all taking the time to come in the evening and learn how to speak english more doors were open to you because of your education so let's go to the next slide okay here's general custer sartok can you read about him please describe as agree, aggressive gallant Reckless and foolhardy, George Armstrong Custer became one of the most celebrated and controversial controversial figures in American history. In 1866, Custer was selected to lead the newly created 77th U.S. Cavalry. and assigned to command the cavalry in the west so he was a rising star um in the forces he proved himself to be very reckless he was always leading his troops into battle right at the front on his horse with his long light colored hair flying in the wind and and uh people thought he was brave and so uh, what do you see in his picture from the expression on his face <laughs> Ma'am, uh, he must be very aggressive and at he must have a good attitude over. A man of discipline, a man of discipline, and uh, highly enthusiastic and very confident, extraordinarily confident. Yeah, and so when you're extraordinarily confident, sometimes you have it's called overconfidence, and yes. when you're overly confident, sometimes that word. reckless and foolhardy so you can be a little bit foolish sometimes if you believe in yourself too much but he was on his way to show everybody that he could tame the west okay they call it tame the west because you can tell from his look he's just a very strong person he thought he could do it so let's go to the next what could go wrong right so let's go to the next slide um i'm thinking that maybe sartak can read that In 1975, it became obvious that the U.S. government was not honoring the treaties with the Native Americans. More and more settlers, settlers came into the region. Sajad, But, Sajad, can you read the next bullet, please? Yes, ma'am. But by, by the late spring of 1876, more than 10,000 Native Americans had gathered in a camp along the Little Bighorn River, which they called Gre Greasy Grass. in defiance of a us war department ordered uh, ordered to re uh, return to their reservations of risk or risk being attacked yeah so there they were they were not paying attention to the order they got together many tribes as you saw at the beginning the arapaho the cheyenne the sioux 10000 of them okay let's go to the next slide there um there's an encampment of the sioux and 10 okay between dacs and manaf if you could remember what the names of these conical cone shaped dwellings are you get an a plus ma'am uh, they were 10 called t 
You're so close. Come on. <laughs> Called T. Keys. You okay? I'll give it to you. <laughs> yes, my okay. keys. Teepees. Okay, there's a big bunch of teepees there because teepees. the Native Americans of Montana they were nomadic tribes. They would live in a teepee, pick it up, and take it someplace else, depending on where the buffalo were. So let's go to the next slide. You can see them gypsies also, not gypsies nomads. Yes, a gypsy is a nomad. So Shivanj, can you read that, please? Yes, ma'am. The day before the battle. Crushed the clever uh, came across an Indian village and uh, spotted many Indian warriors uh, along with the little big hall river. On the night before the battle, Custer uh, Custer granted this gathered. man. He's gathered. He this. His man along the village. Cluster was afraid his this his man men, would men, be not spotted. Men. Um, men would be spotted, and the Indians would be leave in group. So he decided on a surprise attack. The following days. Okay, so a big surprise coming up. Let's go to the next slide. Mm. Okay, Manaf, can you read? Oh, wait, no, I'm going to go here to Docs. Please read that. Native American warrior. 1,500 to 2,500 Indians from five different tribes took part in the battle against the seven cat. Cavalry. The warriors were led by the chief, setting bull and other leaders such as Crazy Horse, White Bull, and Chief God. Okay, so they're um the horse, they're riding their pinto horse, that's a black or a brown and white horse. Notice no saddle with a spear. That was one of their weapons. Um let's go to the next slide. Without the saddle, they were controlling the horse. Hey, um, let's see. I'm gonna switch off, switch off your mic. I'm ha I've got trouble hearing you. I've got this something going on in the background. I'm gonna move again. <laughs> Sorry. What was that, sir? No, oh, there was some sound. I think it was Manos Manos mic. Somebody okay. was grinding something at his home. Okay. So who would like to read next? Ma'am, or Siobhan. Oh boy, that was Dutch for first and then Siobhan. The first group to attack was Major Reno's second detachment. The first group crossed the river and then engaged the Indians in the difficulty battle. You can keep going. Major Reno and his men were driven atop Reno's hill, and as they were almost destroyed, Captain Benteen's column arrived to provide support. The soldiers were able to fight off the Indians and were able to see the last stand of Custer and his men taking place from atop the hill. So our history of this time is all, a lot of it is taken from Major Reno's report because he lived, but they call it Custer's Last Stand because nobody in Custer's cavalry lived. So let's go to the next slide. Okay, and I believe that is Sartak. Would you like to read that? Yes, ma'am. Custer Sutton. Custer's 17 cavalry have initial success during the battle burst, but as Major Reno's men were isolated, the rest of isolated. the warriors isolated, the rest of the warriors were able to attack Custer's men. 
the additional Indian warriors overview overwhelmed Custer and his men. The last 28 men, including Custer, died in a single charge of the Indians in what is known as Custer's last stand. Every man in the 7th Cavalry was killed, including Custer. The entire battle looked less than... Hey, there we go. Custer there.